because the existing properties are mostly freehold. So next up, okay, how are we going to uh, dissect the particular properties? We're going to try and answer using case studies some of these uh, HO questions, right? Which properties, which kind of property is more profitable, freehold or 99? The discussion never ends, right? And we're going to continue it today. Do layouts matter? Does development size matter? Right. Is it true that all transformations is a surefire way to make profits? Is it true that you can time the market to yield super normal profits? And lastly, can all 99 year developments make money? Or most of the time, the question is phrased another way. Lah. Will all 99 year uh, developments lose money? Right. Anyway, same thing. Lah. We're just going to uh, uh, discuss that. And I thought, you know, I, I'm just going to put all these questions there is because uh, while, you know, most people they will ask, first question is, hey, Elvin, this property can make money or not? I like to then dive deeper and ask right, all these questions up front because it's not so much about whether a property can make money or not. And even if I tell them can or cannot, right, these questions usually tend to come up uh, a bit later on. Lah. So might as well, you know, all put up together uh, uh, and discuss, right? So let's move on to our very first case study. And we are starting with District 15, right? Probably the hottest of all ASEAN districts at this point in time. Uh, but moving on, right? The, the, the circus is, is moving out already from District 15. It will, it will come back once Jalan Tembusu is going to launch. But the circus is now going to move over to uh, Amokyo, which is borderline ASEAN, OCR. Uh, but it's in the OCR, lah. so which is why, you know, you don't see the developers really do say, saying that it's uh, Asia or anything. And how many of you think the new uh, Amokyo residence, the name is, is, is really, really bad? But that's besides the point. Right, District 15, okay. Um, I'm going to zoom in on two areas in District 15, right? The Amber area and as well as the Mayor uh, area. I dive into the Mayor area quite a bit in my video, right? Uh, on my review of, of Live at MB. La. I actually picked out a few examples uh, and whatnot. And so I, I wouldn't really be repeating uh, the points I mentioned uh, in that video over there, right? So do go and watch it, not now, watch it later. Now you can follow, uh, continue to uh, follow us. But in the mayor area, okay, in the mayor area, it's very, very interesting, right? Uh, because the existing properties are mostly freehold, but yet they have very, very different uh, um, performance, okay? I want you to, I can bring your attention, I hope I can highlight it. Uh, I can't really highlight it. But I bring your attention to the annualized capital gains part, right? One, two, three, four. The fourth column uh, from the right, uh, fourth column from the right. The annualized capital gains column. Notice how Makina, Belvedere and Seafront, they all do decently well, right? With the, the, the majority of them uh, making profits and the annualized profits uh, doing quite well. Um, but you know, Fulcrum and the line doing badly. I dive into the reasons why uh, in the in, in the Leaf at MB video. Lah. But you know, the main points really is layouts matter. Right? Layouts matter. Notice how even though Belvedere and basically Fulcrum and the line have same number of units, Belvedere still outperform them uh, by quite a bit. Why? Uh? go into the thing. It's not because the other three got C view. While yes, some of the units have C view, the units that don't have C view in the, the, the first three developments still do very, very well. Okay. And the other thing I put it down to as well, it's timing. Okay. So the, those two points, uh, Fulcrum and the line, they were sold at really a timing that is 
very very bad for investors and it's also the timing that um, I don't think we will encounter again why because it was in that period pre-cooling measure so for those who follow us you know we actually characterize the whole Singapore property market just like how you know in when years right we have uh, uh, BC and AD ma, you know like BC right before Christ and AD is you know our now to 2020 uh, and all those whatnot right the, the years are in the Singapore property market right there is before cooling measures and after cooling measures right before cooling measures is basically pre 2013 after cooling measures is post 2013 and why I say you can essentially draw a line right down the middle and fundamentals change very very differently on the two sides of 2013 is because before 2013 no cooling measures example earlier 90% LTV no APSD means also a lot of speculative demand in Singapore similarly also no foreigner ABSD so you can see right there are for this particular development not so much in terms of uh, foreign ownership later on I go mayor and I show you Silver Sea you'll be shocked by the number percentage of foreign owners in Silver Sea and that's also one of the reasons why prices at Silver Sea uh, don't move another reason why if you jump over to reflections at Capo Bay prices also don't move right so uh, that's that on Mayer, right? Profitable ones, right? Even though they are quite old, you see Makina, 1998, 22, 22, yeah, 22 years old. Excellent, ex excellent profits. Let me, let me, let me just show some of those uh, examples to you guys, right? Uh, I can go to the website. And we can check out Seafront at Mayer. Okay, so just now if you notice Seafront at Mayer, they put the percentage analyzed not very high. But if you really just zoom in and come and take a look, right? The profitable transactions are you notice how people they buy in, in 2017 and sell in 2020, basically a five-year holding period that can yield about four hundred thousand uh, dollars in profits. Uh. 1066 square feet most likely is a two bedroom uh, only. Yeah, 1604 square feet, of course, you'll make a, a lot, a lot more. Yeah, just look at the, the amount of profits. Uh, that they make do also note that a lot of these purchases right some of them were purchased during a time where the market was uh, at a peak if it wasn't in a good area like district 15 if this was in another area for example somebody that bought their properties in 2011 12 13 most likely will yield a loss okay so this one is also another talk another question that we'll talk about right timing does it matter it does Right? The timing of entry and the timing of exit matters. Right? But if you listen carefully, the market will we see a similar situation happening uh, as the, you know, from speculative demand to no speculative demand happening again? I don't think so. So we do not, I do not foresee us going through a similar cycle as, you know, uh, buying in 2011, 12, 13, and then after that having to wait really really long time to break even uh, on your property right but that's besides uh, the point right I wanted to just share some of these uh, uh, profits with you so even though the property is not very big 100 plus uh, units they still can yield pretty decent profits if they are in a good area of strong organic demand right check out the video as I dive into that a little bit uh, in more detail now let us go back to the amber area because there's more things that i want to talk about in the amber uh, area so over in amber i chose some of the prop i chose the properties that are slightly bigger in size right we have the Esta at 400 units one amber at 562 units the sea view 546 units the Shaw 408, Silver Sea 383, the smallest one being Alto at 196 units. This one actually very drastic and this 
is the reason the reason why I'm putting it here is for all the you know the 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 debaters of 99 versus uh, freehold because a lot of the info that you see online especially in the last couple of years will tell you 99 does better but this is one case study that freehold actually has outperformed the 99 if you can see ESTA, One Ember, Seaview being the both freehold developments their annualized capital gains is at 6% uh, all three of them very very consistent right the shore harvest at 3.9 silver sea at 0.2 so remember i was saying look at the percentage foreign ownership at silver sea 41 percent basically half of them are foreigners and these guys when they bought that time a lot of them got no absd as well and with foreigners you know uh, especially the guys buying these tend to be high net worth uh, individuals they are looking to move their money around as and when they deem each uh, city or the exchange rate being favorable favorable to them so if i were to buy a property that is actually one of the key points that i will look out for i wouldn't want to go into a property with a lot of foreigners because you are then at their mercy if you now let me very quickly jump over to the uh, website and we can check out some of the graphs of it right I think that's more interactive that way over here yeah so why try and avoid now because you can see I'm gonna refresh this and then you can see the trend lines of the silver sea the prices have basically stagnated and not moved uh, over over the years almost a straight line as a matter of fact for those of them that bought uh, before 2012 uh, at close to 1800 PSF till today it's uh, easily uh, lose money one uh. okay but the shore on the other hand has performed quite well okay so now the case study right i'm going to compare the shore okay with the sea view the largest unit uh, the largest development in the area and sort of let's see what are some of the takeaways that we can get from a case study like that okay they are about six years difference in age lah but there wasn't any of the freehold, good size freehold ones that TOP in 2014. So, you know, I, I try my best, but it's not exactly the most apple to apple comparison, but I guess it serves uh, uh, to show the point. And we zoom into the, the chart. So, notice how when, when the shore first launched, it was at a really, really close price uh, to the sea view. And obviously, at that point in time, you know them being like side by side very close to one another i guess the logical people would have then chose to go for uh, the sea view but the sea view actually went through a couple of years of basically not outperforming the shore all the way until 2017 2018 right notice how in the absence of a seller's market the freehold developments tend not to outperform the 99-year developments. Yeah, that's one key takeaway because that was one round of seller's market late 2017 to 2018, stopping at the 2018 cooling measures, right? July 28th, 5th July 2018. Then come the next round. And after that, after that seller's market uh, went off, their prices actually just hovered around, uh, around that until the recent seller's market and then we see prices really really shooting up for the sea view and with this shoot up what is my takeaway uh, from it okay this particular case study right if we really were to dissect it point number one was what i said earlier the freehold developments tend to outperform uh, only in seller's market in the absence of a seller's market they tend to actually perform relatively similar especially if you are comparing it to a younger 99 year development so it's important to really consider your holding period what, what are the kinds of holding period uh, are you looking for are you if you are an investor are you willing to hold out for a bit longer for the right time to sell your property right because if 
our good friends at the Seaview at that point in time only had the patience to hold it for four years, they would not have outperformed the shop. Okay, they had to hold a good uh, until all the way from 2010. Of course, don't talk about the guys that own it uh, from day one, uh, but the, the owners at 20, the buyers at 2010 who chose to buy the Seaview because you know the Shaw 99 is uh, uh, almost the same price, if not at one point in time slightly more expensive. They had to wait a good five years, seven years uh, to outperform, right? Next thing, if I add in the Esta and One Ember, you will notice that the Seaview actually is outperforming all of them. If you zoom in, right, while all of, all, all of them actually saw a pickup in price, uh, very, very recently, I mean, because everyone else saw a pickup in price, the Seaview was the one that really push uh, uh, prices off uh, to another benchmark price uh, causing 2,250 PSF. The answer is, the, the question is why? If you actually do go and view uh, the properties, you will understand that the Seaview uh, is actually a much better product. It's a much bigger land plot with a lot better facilities as compared to say, uh, even the shore. The shore facilities is actually very, very nice. Fire is development. But the Seaview just has a very different vibe. So here it is. If there's a lot of competition in the area, make sure you go for, try your best to go for the big brother of the place. The place that's going to attract or the place that's going to wow people. And this is why, if we go back uh, to the mayor site, for example, right? If you saw my review or if you're going to watch my review at Leaf and MB, that's one of the points uh, that I highlighted. The mark, you, you got to understand what the market likes and what the market is leaning towards. Uh. The market is leaning towards quality. The market is le leaning towards buying something that, you know, albeit expensive, you know, because here it is, the oldest development of the lot, right, is outperforming all the other developments, 99 or Freehold. So if you ask me, Freehold or 99, does it matter? Actually, end up, it doesn't matter. I look at the quality size of the project as a more important parameter. That is one of my key takeaways for after analysing the whole Ember Park area. Now, back... Uh, to it, the Amber area, sorry, not Amber Park. But if you are sharp and you look at the kind of PSFs that the Sea View is 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 getting, uh, you will know that actually Amber Park is quite a you know, of, of, of really quite decent value. Almost the same uh, PSF as a as a new development. Very very close, ten percent difference. Oops, I accidentally opened the wrong one. Now moving on. Right, so that is the takeaway for Amber, right? Conclusion, right? 99 uh, over freehold. In what circumstance will I choose 99 over freehold? If the 99 year old development is of a better quality and if the freehold around the area is smaller in terms of the development, right? That is where I will lean uh, towards 99 price aside. Freehold over 99, when? When is it better? Of course, if the freehold is of a much bigger size than the 99 year development as seen with the sea view example but of course you need to have patience right you need to make sure that your holding period is long enough for it to reach a seller's market then outperform the 99 if not most of the time is quite balanced and then if you're looking for own stay then see whether or not which one your budget uh, allows lah, right? This is only purely for more of an investment point of view. Development size very very important. After checking it through Mayer and Amber area, the larger the development is better most of the time. Just cannot say all the time. I'm gonna just leave myself a bit of uh, uh, room because of course I haven't seen every single development in Singapore. That's why I say most of the time because I also know some the local small more freehold developments. Some of them, with a bit of luck, can actually also make money, okay? But general rule of thumb, you want to play safe, go for the bigger development and the better quality development, okay? Moving on.